Expectations were after particularly that the back end of that Wall Street session that we were going to see some weakness today and we certainly got that. It wasn't a pretty market today. We saw the Australian market losing a fair bit of ground, all sectors trading lower. In fact, if we have a look at the top 20 blue chips, every single one of them, we didn't see any gains in that top 20. And if we have a look at the top 50, we only saw three stocks managing gains there, and that was Lenley, Stockland, as well as Amcor. In fact, two out of the top three performers in the top 50 were property stocks, and that property sector was the best performing area today. As a sector, it was down by 0.6%. But one of the things that we have noticed is that property is seen as a defensive area. And over the last month, over the last quarter, as well as over the last year, we've seen it outperforming the Australian market in general. So if we have a look at property over the last month, Month, it's actually up by 0.6%. Over the last quarter, it's up by 5%. And over the last year, it's flat, beating the S&P ASX 200 index. Part of that are the high yields in that property space, as well as falling uh, cash rates here in Australia, which makes it an attractive place to be. On the flip side, those, those miners having a terrible time of it. The gold index actually down by 2.4%. And stocks like Fortescue losing a massive 5% in today's session. And of course, around the region, the losses were across the board. It was interesting to see Japan's performance today. Uh, and an interesting case in point in what happens when the markets don't get what they want. Uh, Bank of Japan announcing no further easing. And the Japanese market down by 2.1% at the moment. I mean, with, with, with so many global markets if you like hanging off it is is there a need for it to deliver something even if john mentions you know it, it's like a, a baby step is there the need for something just to to calm markets to a degree I think the markets have gotten used to uh, a lot of talk and no action. But if we do see some sort of agreement coming out for it, that would be a positive uh, for the markets. And as John mentioned, the magic word at the moment is euro bonds. If we do see our talk of euro bonds and possibly some support from Germany of those euro bonds, the market would see that as a step in the right direction. So at the moment, Europe very much at the forefront, and that's been the driver of market sentiment. Of course, following on from those problems in Europe is the impact it has in terms of global growth and we mm. saw the World Bank coming out with its forecast but if you sort of strip out Germany and Japan which is still growing uh, quite strongly uh, we're, we're seeing contraction in areas like uh, Greece Italy Portugal the Netherlands uh, Brazil and also slowing growth in other areas especially in China that's being watched uh, very closely but at the heart of it is whether or not we are going to see a major event in Europe take place market from a, a technical perspective a lot of people talking about a very wide Train, trading range from about 4100 to, to 4400 obviously closing below that I mean have we now moved beyond that into a, another sort of negative trend or it is one movement on market not sort of make that sort of broader picture well, 4,000 points is the psychological level that we're, we're watching. And previously, what we've seen uh, is that dips under 4,000 have been brought up quite strongly by fund managers. Um, so it will be interesting to see whether we do continue to see some support around that 4,000 point level, given the number of earnings downgrades that we mm. are seeing on the market now at the moment. So while the market looks cheap, the flip side of, of it is that it does look like earnings expectations for the current full year are being wound back here in, on the Australian market. So technically, we are uh, looking at that 4,000 uh, point psychological level. We have been there in the past and whenever we have seen a dip uh, there has been some stronger buying coming through but all up it all depends on the European situation. Having a look at the volatility curve in the US and it inverted uh, it's showing inversion at the moment and really that points to event risk and uh, the big event risk on the market is Europe and that's really what's driving investment.